most people, even when they try to get someone else to tell them, they go to somebody else who's not achieved it. It's like going to a doctor who's fat, smoking, and overweight, you know, in every way, and saying, show me how to get fit. And many people do that. Or they go to somebody who sells financial tools, who's never really made any money, and have to say, manage my money for me. And they're a salesman. Nothing wrong with that, but if they're not making more than you are, that's a clue that maybe you're, you're dealing with the wrong person here. So my life has been about the concept of modeling, and that's what this week is. Modeling says success leaves clues. If someone is successful at anything, not once, but consistently, they're not lucky. They're not better than you are. They're not smarter. They just have a strategy. There's something they're doing different than you are. If you take the same steps, if you take the same actions, if you sow the same seeds, you can reap the same rewards. This week's going to give you a chance to model. A whole series of doing strategies that are proven and that work. Now, there's another metaphor for this that I use that I think is really useful, and it's a good metaphor for this week overall. This person, when they get to this stage, they want to find somebody who's already gotten the result. They don't want to reinvent the wheel. They don't want to waste all their time. Because what they're really looking for is someone who knows the road ahead. Because they can guide them. So I'll give you an example, a metaphor. How many of you in this room, I want an honest answer with energy. So I want a strong yes if it's true. How many of you in this room have ever experienced the humiliating experience of playing a video game against a child? <laughs> Say I if you've had this experience. Who always wins? Why does the child always win? Is it because they're faster, because they're smarter? How does the game work? You sit down with your nephew, your niece, uh, a local person, a friend of yours, child, and they say, here, come on, try this little game. And you're like, no, 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 I don't know. Oh, sure, it's easy. And they say, here's all you do. Take this thing, push this and this, shoot that and shoot that. And, you, and they go, here, you go ahead, you go first. They always like you to go first. And so you get there, you got your little gun and you're ready and you're ready to go. And all of a sudden you go, choo, choo. And then within 2.5 seconds, what happens? You're gone in less than three seconds. And the kid kind of smiles and says, well, let me show you how. And the kid goes, cha-choon, 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 cha-choon. And about 45 minutes later, you get your second turn. <laughs> Who's had this experience? Say I. And by the way, you get it next time you're out in five seconds, another 45. I mean, this goes on and on. They get 8 million points, you got 12, <laughs> right? And they kind of snicker at the end. Now, why does this child always win? Is it because they're younger? Is it because they're faster? Is it because they're smarter? No, there's only one reason they win. Because they've played this game before. As a result, they know the road ahead. And listen to me now. This is where the value is going to come out of this day and really for this week, what we're about to enter into shortly. If you know the road ahead, you have the power of anticipation, not reaction. Anticipation is one of the ultimate powers in life and in business. Anticipation is power. When you know the road ahead, you really have power in your life. Does that make sense? How come that child has done this? It's not just they know the road ahead. Watch me. You go to shoot, and you're trying to figure out what's going to happen. So all of a sudden, you get shot over here, and you react. Then you shot over here, and react. And you shot behind you, and react. Reaction will cause you to die. Reaction will kill your business. Reaction will kill your relationship. Why is that child doing well? Because the child knows the first bad guy is here to my left. What do they know next? I don't even have to wait. I know the next bad guy is behind me on the right, and they turn and shoot him before he can do anything. I know the next challenge is going to be over here, over on this side. I know the next challenge is going to be in front of me, the next one behind, behind me. And they play it enough times that they know where the problem is going to be, and they go solve the problem before it has any power over them. We're going to show you today, to me and my experience of 12 companies, companies, small companies, big companies, public company I took, a set of distinctions that once I knew that, it changed my entire business career because it allowed me to anticipate where the problems were going to be like magic. It allowed me to recognize the pattern so I could play the game and win. And when you do that, the whole game changes. But to finish the metaphor, what does the master do differently? They want to know the road ahead, so they find somebody who's done it. So let's say you were playing tennis. And let's say you're lucky enough to know Andre Agassi, which I do, and he lives here in Vegas. And you say, Andre, I'm brand new at tennis. I'm not that great, but I'm having a good time. But I'm kind of stuck. I'm not going next level. I'm sure you could just look at me in a few seconds. And, You've done this before. You know what to do. 
I'm working with a coach, but I'm not making progress. He says, well, let me see you play. And you play a few times. He goes, oh, no problem. He said, you're actually doing great. I mean, for the number of hours of lessons you've had, you're doing great, really great. But here's what you're doing. One change I gotta give you. You're holding the racket like this. You gotta hold the racket more like this. And that's not actually how he shows you, but that's how it feels to you. And he goes, just go ahead and swing and do that. And so now you've been working really hard to make progress. And now you go to try to hit it and tell me what happens when we try to hit it the way the master teaches you, what happens? You get better or worse? You get worse, your talent, your ability goes down. Now when the ability goes down, what would a dabbler do at this point? Screw you. What does an achiever do? They go, I know you're the master, but I gotta find a way, I gotta break this thing, I gotta make this thing happen. And they go back to what they feel in control of. But someone who's a master, when it gets worse, they go, it's okay, right? Paint the fence. Remember, right? Wash on, wash off. I hate this crap. Wash on, wash off. But some part of them trust the master does know. Because they played this game. There is, they are training me. And sure enough, you do it, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. What happens one day in the middle of nowhere? You go from playing worse to all of a sudden you go, ba-boom, and the ball goes over. You go, oh my God, ba-boom, ba-boom, and the ball dies over the other side. And your game, does it get a little better? What happens? It explodes forward, not a little, giant growth, 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 progress, you're happy, happy, happy. What eventually happens, tell me quick. Boom, hit a plateau. Does this happen to every business, yes or no? Does this happen to every relationship, yes or no? Every career, yes or no? Every body, physical body, yes or no? And by the way, you don't quit, you don't stress, you go, ah, oh, a plateau, to be expected. What do I need? I need someone who's got this road before, who knows who's in front of me, who can I learn from? You find that person, they show you, you get worse, and then you explode better. That process, will change your business career. Most people fail because they don't want problems, and if they start to solve them and it's working, they want to keep solving it the old way because they understand it, rather than a new way that doesn't work at first but eventually takes you to a different world. How many follow what I'm talking about here? Say I. So to finish this training effect, if you're training a person and you're the leader, you want to train them and you know their skills are going to go up, and by the way, if you do nothing, What's eventually gonna happen? They're not just gonna plateau. If it's a new skill, what's gonna happen? Is it gonna drop down, yes or no? So they're gonna train them and they get better for a while and they drop down. But by the way, they're not gonna drop down to zero. Maybe they drop down even a third, 40%. They're not where you want them to be. You wanna get them to 100%, they're only at, they went up to 30 and dropped to 20. 20 is better than zero. Instead of being frustrated, you go, guess what I gotta do? Repetition. They got a little cognitive understanding. They got a little emotion. Got to train them again. Let's show them again what it is. Let's get them emotional about it. Let's do it again with repetition. And now you start from a higher place at 20. And you grow, boom, 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 boom. Another 30, 35%, you're up at 70% of mastery. What's going to happen? Plateau, what's eventually going to happen even? Going to go down. Maybe they drop by a third. But now they're at 50% mastery. It's this thing, damn, why do we train these people? They don't retain it. Don't be stupid, this is how you train somebody. Now you train them again. Repetition, the video, the audio, a class, you coaching them, a mentor, whatever it is, a coach. Train them again, and by the way, what eventually happens with enough training effect? They master where their downside is higher than most people's idea of mastery. How many, by the way, have done this in some area of your own life? You kept training yourself, got stronger and stronger. Say I. I. That's the process we're gonna do here. I got a question for you though. Could you know all this? Could you understand all this and still not get a result? Yes or no? And what would stop that result? Action. But if it was just related on you, that'd be easy. And many of you are leaders and you're used to in your life being able to do whatever you want. And when your business is small, you can run the whole thing. But as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you're more dependent upon other people. Maybe people you don't even personally know real well. Their skill sets may not be as strong as yours. You want to do it, but you're trying to implement it, but it's not happening. If you and I are going to take things to the next level, we got to understand what causes things to fail. So who in this room has ever failed to achieve their goal, their dream, their desire? Who's ever failed to do it? Say, I. Yes, again, if you don't raise your hand, you lie about other stuff too. 
Uh, I asked this question years ago, a couple years ago, I was speaking at a group called TED, Technology, Entertainment, and Design. And the room was a thousand people, it was a really dark room, and it was filled with the best of the best in business and technology, like the guys that founded Google were there, and you know, the guys that you know, started Yahoo, you know, people from the entertainment business, some of the biggest names and influencers in that business, people from scientists from all over the world. It's a really cool thing. If you've never been to TED and you can never get in, go there. And there's a place called TED.com where you can watch many of these videos. But here's what they do. Everybody has 18 minutes and they bring over the course of four days all these speakers and you have 18 minutes to deliver your message. Now, since my shortest message is usually 50 hours, I was somewhat stressed because I didn't want to give a message. I want to train people. Our goal is to immerse each other so we don't just know it, we don't just feel it, we get enough habit, we do it. But I said, okay, I'll do it. I have some friends there. They said, you gotta go, it's really important. I get there and the first thing they tell me is, when you get up there, this guy doesn't know me, he runs the show, says, uh, don't get people jumping and stuff. Please don't do that stuff. Uh, don't change their state, let them sit like they normally do in the dark, totally silent, doing nothing. So okay, if I'm not gonna change them physically, the other way you can change them is by changing their focus. So the way you change someone's focus, ask them a quality what? And you keep asking their answers. So I didn't, you know, I'm up on stage and the room's completely dead and quiet and I'm starting out. And so I said, who here has ever failed to achieve a dream or goal of theirs? And I raised my hand, not a single hand gets raised in the entire room. You know, thank you for your full participation. I said, come on, who here? And I used my own state and I got them. They all raised their hand. So then I asked them this question. I'm gonna ask you the same question. It's the first time I've ever asked them. It was, it was really interesting to see the answer. I said, okay, you've all failed to achieve your goal. Better yet, who's here has had someone else who worked for you who failed to achieve their goal? Who's had that happen in this room as well? Raise your hand, say I. Pretty frustrating, isn't it? So when people fail to achieve their goal, what's the reason they give? They always can tell you why they failed. They can tell everybody why they failed. Or when you failed, why have you said you failed? And then all of a sudden people start yelling answers. So let's see your answers so I can compare them. If you fail to achieve your goal or someone who's working for you failed and they didn't achieve it, what's the first answer they tell you why? Why didn't you achieve the goal? The answer is quick. What do they say? Quick. Didn't have enough time. Number one answer you'll usually hear, didn't have enough time. But most of us who have ever done any studies on this have found there's a paradox. There's a paradigm. Work always expands to meet the time you have for it. Who's ever had no time, and because of that, you had a breakthrough? How many of you had this happen before? Say, I. So they'll say, I don't have time. What's the next thing they say? Did, I failed because we didn't achieve the goal because, quick, why? Didn't have enough money. We didn't have the economic resources, right? What's another one? Quick. Didn't have the experience. We didn't have enough experience to figure out how to do this, to make it happen. Somebody else, why did we fail? You didn't help me enough. It's your fault, <laughs> right? Many times you'll hear people say, you know, a manager will say, I got lousy people. And then people say, we have lousy management. Why else do we fail? Lousy management, lousy people, not enough resources, not enough money, not enough time, what else? It's the market, it's the conditions of the market. The market is really bad, that's why it's the market's fault. Right? There wasn't the, you know, the market just doesn't have the potential to do this much business. Someone else, why do we fail? The industry's bad, why do we fail? What's that? We don't know what to do. We don't have the right network. We don't know the right people. Come on, why else did we fail? Why, come on. We didn't have the technology. There's not enough desire in the organization. We don't know the right contacts. And all these things are being yelled, same things you're telling me are being yelled, and in the darkness I heard this voice say, I didn't have enough Supreme Court justices. <laughs> and I looked down in the darkness and it's Vice President Al Gore. True story. And the whole room starts laughing, right? And this is in Northern California, which is a very democratic stronghold group of people that were there in the technology business. So they start clapping, right? And what's he alluding to? He's alluding to the fact that he lost the presidency, right? Even though he had a slight majority in the popular vote, but he lost it because it went to the Supreme Court. And so the group claps like crazy. And I look at him and say, that's one way to explain why you failed to become president of the United States. And the whole room goes. <laughs> and I said, so let's look at this. Let's look at not just you, but let's look at this whole pattern. Because I'm a student of patterns. If you want to succeed, you have to become a student of patterns. You've got to be good at pattern recognition and pattern utilization. Patterns give you the breakthrough. That kid that plays the game is great at pattern recognition. So they can anticipate 
and they don't have to react. That gives them power. So let's look at the pattern here. Every person in this room who described failure described it for the following reasons, and I gave all the reasons. Time, money, network we don't have, people we don't have, not the right management, not the right people, right? We don't have the resource, and they went through this whole thing. I said, what all these things, not of Supreme Court justices, what they all have in common is, you're all saying we didn't have the resources to succeed. Money is a resource. Time is a resource. Technology is a resource. People is a resource. Experience is a resource. Supreme Court justices are so many resources, right? And they all agreed. I said, here's the only problem. I said, in my experience, and you correct me if you're wrong, and I want an honest answer. When we get out of ourselves and we look at human beings and their ability to succeed or fail, how many people you've ever met who did not have the resources and they beat somebody who had all the resources? I said, resources, when you look at the most powerful and effective people in history, were never the problem. They didn't have the resources, but they got them. How do people get resources when they don't have them? The answer is, they're resourceful. <laughs> the ultimate resource is resourcefulness. That's what makes someone successful. And here's what's great about resourcefulness. Who has it within them? Who? Who? Every human being. But the question is whether you access it or not. See, I said earlier, you know this stuff, but if you don't do it, why aren't you doing it? It's not because you can't, it's because you're not being resourceful enough. You'll tell me the reason I went back and the market was like this. I went back and my people wouldn't do that. I went back, but is there an answer to every one of those problems, yes or no? If you are what enough, what enough? So think of it this way. What's the ultimate resource then? Resourcefulness, me, but I'll give you a more specific one. Human emotion. Human emotion. Because remember we said, you can know what to do but not do it because you don't have enough emotion. Think about it. Here's the ultimate resource. It's not time. It isn't money. It isn't a network. It isn't a computer system. It isn't even the right people. If you're committed enough, determined enough, can you find the people, yes or no? Yes, yes or no, my friends, come on. Yes. If you're creative enough and you don't have the money, can you find the money, yes or no? If you are warm enough, loving enough, connected enough, can you help people enough that they'll want to help you, yes or no? Yes. It doesn't matter what it is you want, you can get the resources if you're resourceful enough. And the ultimate resource is human emotion. So if you want to master business, you must become a master of human emotion, your own first and others. And you want a good example? You can see them anywhere. And by the way, you can see them in one of the largest retailers in the world. What company is that, quick? Walmart. Take a look at Walmart. If you want to study some history and find something interesting, look at Walmart in 1974. Go back and read the financial papers, right? What people were saying in the market, what all the pundits were saying about what you should do with Walmart in 1974. Anybody know? Buy or sell. Which one? Virtually all these people are saying sell. And here was the reason. They've run out of resources. And guess what those resources were? Money, what else? Money was a base, but the biggest thing they said is, he's taken all the market. There's only so many cities where you can bring in one of these cheap, you know, low price mentality retailers. That was the belief. By the way, who was dominating the retail market at that time? Sears and who else? Kmart. You know, in 1974, there were 78 Walmarts. There were more than 1,600 Kmarts. And I can't even remember how many Sears, I apologize, but tons. The combined market value of Sears and Kmart was like 10,000 fold of what it was for Walmart. You know what's interesting though? What do these pundits miss? It's true, they didn't have the resources, but Sam Walton was one of the most resourceful human beings in the world. They didn't understand the value of his ability to go into his people, maximize their energy, their excitement, get them so excited about a discount for a client that they'd get in the car and drive four cities over to make a buy. That when people came in, they'd say, don't go here, let me show you what we can do. He turned them on fire, and he turned himself on fire, and he produced more sales, and he produced more revenue, he produced more profit, he got more funding. He didn't believe what they believed, he had a different blueprint. They told him what he couldn't do, he just got in his truck and did it, right? His whole mindset is, I'm gonna make it happen. 
and Walmart beat Kmart. Guess how they did it? Different belief system. Instead of there's only so many cities, we're gonna go outside cities where there's a small population, but they all could drive 20 to 30 minutes. But if they had this opportunity to save money, they would. And they created a different model that opened the market geometrically. And today, what the, what's the size of Walmart? Anybody know? What's the, what number of billion in sales? How much? 350 B billion in sales. A third of a trillion. And guess what? They dominate the world. By the way, where did Kmart go in the meantime? Bankrupt. So when I said this, everybody, guess what's happened? All these people are like, wow, yeah, wow, makes sense, yeah. So then I turn back and I turn to Vice President Al Gore and I say, so Mr. Vice President, I watched you last night. He'd done a speech the night before, before he'd come out with a movie of, what's the title of it? An Inconvenient Truth. It was a speech he was doing first. And he gave us that speech the night before. And I worked with President Clinton a lot. I knew Al Gore from that time, not real well. I worked morally with Clinton, but I knew him, obviously. And I'd seen him speak many times, like all of you. And I said to him, last night, you were on fire. The level of energy, everybody in this room was affected. And the whole room started clapping like crazy. I mean, he was like a different guy. I said, let me just tell you something. If you think it was the Supreme Court justices, you don't get it. When you went and debated George Bush that first time, I remember it vividly on national television trying to decide what to do, and I said, I couldn't vote for you. If I wanted to, I couldn't, because there just was no energy. There was no passion. There was no nothing there. I said, if you had been the man you were last night, if you'd used all your resources, you wouldn't need a Supreme Court justice to even vote, and you would have been president of the United States. And he went, and the whole room stood up and would start clapping like crazy, right? And he came by and gave me a high five and a hug. Right? Everybody, you know, came to it. And that night, I had the guys from Kleiner Perkins, you know, the billionaire guys that really head the tech industry. They all took me to dinner and go, we've all been wanting to say that to him for like six years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't believe you said that in front of everybody. I said, this is the truth. Go, I know it's truth. Can, can you get him to run for president? I go, no, he's got a different mission now. But that's it, man. I want you to get this week. There is no limitation except the one you're creating yourself, not some positive thinking BS, but because the resources you need are there if you're resourceful enough. If your team's more resourceful, you'll find the way. It can't just be you, which is why you create a culture like this. That's where the game changes. And that's why these seven pillars are gonna be so valuable. 